Hello, mathematician friends. We're going to continue addition and subtraction within 20. Big idea, idea number one was about learning strategies. We're going to continue to use those strategies as we move into big idea number two, or continue in this, where we're now doing addition and subtraction situations. That just means we're putting the math into real life by using word problems to help it make sense. Today's lesson, Unit 1, Lesson 12, I can solve put-together, take-apart problems. That's going to be very similar to what we've been doing the past few days. Hopefully by the end, you can answer whether the unknown number is the total or the part in our math mountain or equation. What we're trying to solve for the unknown, whether it's the total or the part. Remember, we always, when using, when solving word problems, we always need to read the problem carefully, maybe reread it, then think about it, consider what problem type we may be um, figuring out to help us decide whether we need that math mountain or that compare drawing. So notice how on our poster, this is a math mountain, this is a math mountain, this is a math mountain, this is a compare problem. So today, um, we're going to be focusing on the put together, take apart. We've already done add to, where something's coming into the scene, and take from, where something was leaving the scene. So if anything doesn't sound familiar, check out our videos from um, Monday and Tuesday's math section of the roadmap. And um, so today's put together, take apart, um, remember that, that these Two slides are also in your problem type chart node on your math um, roadmap. I have also linked those to um, Google Classroom for you to view if that's handy for you um, to view easily. And um, this page should be printable from there. I don't know if the other slides um, are printable or not. All right, so put together, take apart. Nothing is leaving or coming into the scene. Okay, we might have two different colors or sizes of something, maybe different categories, and we're trying to, um, or we know the total, and we know how many of one category, we need to figure out the other category. So maybe the categories are different kinds of zoo animals, and we know the total number of animals, or how many um, male and, uh, elephants there are and the total how many female elephants are there things like that where nothing is coming or leaving we're just trying to put together and take apart the numbers within that math mountain so grab your whiteboard and page 43 in your math books and get ready with a pencil and your and your marker and all of your supplies ready. So if you need to pause and come back, go ahead and do that. Let's take a look at this problem. Jason puts four large plates and eight small plates on the table. How many plates are on the table in all? So let's read that again. Jason puts four large plates and eight small plates on the table. How many plates are on the table in all? So the first question we ask ourselves is, what question does the problem ask? Make sure you're thinking about that. So this how many plates in all, right, is really that end part of the question there. How many plates are on the table in all? How many plates in all? Are we looking for a total or an add end? Let's think about that again. Jason puts four large, eight small plates on the table. Oh, what do you think? Yeah, a total. How do you know? Well, Jason already has big plates and small plates. We have to find out how many of both sizes he has. Okay, so now's where you need to use your math board, your whiteboard, piece of paper, and re think about the steps in deal. Drawing, equation, answer, label. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you this middle one first because that's got the drawing. Okay, so if you needed to pause, then um, go ahead and do that. Maybe back up a step. <laughs> and then, um, so the port, port, the parts or add-ins are for the L for large and eight S for small plates. You could have a blank here. That's okay until you have a chance to solve it. And so notice how they have all of the parts labeled, large, small, in all. Then the equation, four plus eight equals blank. Remember, it would be okay to have a blank here and a blank here until you have a chance to solve. So I may also see some sort of solution on your paper. That would be okay. So here, this person started with eight, even though the problem reads four large and eight small, eight is a larger number, so it's easier to count on from when they're adding the four. So you can see how they added four large plates in their picture. Two of them would be, get them to 10, and so then two more for 12. 12 plates in all. So I should see all of those on your, on your paper that you're drawing your equation, then figuring out the answer in some way. If it's math in your head, that's fine. But it's okay to have these blanks because as we work towards larger numbers, it's okay to know that you might not instantly know the solution right away and that you may need drawings to figure those out. Now listen to this problem. So now Jason puts four large plates and some small plates on the table. Altogether, there are 12 plates. How many plates are small? Okay, so this time we've got Jason still. Now he has four large plates and some small plates. Altogether, there are 12. So how is this like the one we just did and how is it different? You can pause and figure um, some of this out for yourself. Um, how do we, what do we have to find out? Okay, so what's the question that's being asked? How many small plates Jason put on the table? Are we looking for the total or the add end? So think through your math mountain there. We've got four large plates and some small plates and all together there are 12. Hmm. So it sounds like 12, all together there are 12. That's got to be the total, right? So we must be looking for an add end, right? One of the partners. How do you know? Well, we just said we, we know um, that what the total plates are because it told us that there were 12 all together. So we don't know how many small there are. So solve on your math board and play when you get ready to hear the solution to see if yours match. I'm going to show the math mountain first. Again, remember that your blank part, that's okay until you figure out the solution. So here's the drawing equation. Notice how all of these are labeled. Here's one kind of solution, and here's a different way to solve. So some people may be using pictures, some people may be using numbers to help them come up with a solution. So this time they started with four, and then they drew one, two, three, four, five, left a little space after the five, six, seven, eight. Well, they knew that four and six makes a 10, so then they could see the two more would be 12, for that total. I'm sorry, they didn't add eight. Well, they, they did, but they could go um, four and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, because they knew there was 12 all, th all together and then counted their eight that they drew, right? This person said, well, four, hmm, how many, how many do I need to get to 12? Well, four and six would make 10 and two more to make 12. 
So then those 6 and 2 is 8 that I needed to add to the 4 to get to 12. So 4 plus 8 equals 12 altogether. Here's a different one. 13 large and small plates were on the table. Jason put 7 large plates on a shelf and the small plates on the counter. How many small plates are on the counter? Okay, so what do we have to find out? Ah, how many small plates Jason has. Just like we did in the first in the in the previous one, in the one we just did, we have to figure out how many small plates. Are we looking for a total or an add-end? 13 large and small plates were on the table. Jason put the seven large on the shelf and some and the small plates on the counter. How many small plates? Oh, yeah, if if 13's the total, then we know we're looking for one of the add-ins, right? So you can pause and then come back to this to look at the drawing, equation, answer. Maybe you, you did another kind of drawing to figure out the answer, and everything should be labeled. Make sure that when you write it on your paper um, for your math problems for these today, that the label includes something that it's about, right? There are 13 people in a bike race. How many people are at the bottom of the hill? So here there should be blank people at the bottom of the hill. Okay, blank people would be enough for today. Of course, filling in that blank when you figure out the answer. None of these math mountains are on page 43. You need to draw those. That's your drawing. Make sure you have all of your labels, your equation, and then write it one more time when you figure out the answer, um, the solution, and your label of what type of thing you were trying to find. How many horses are on the farm altogether? Blank horses. All right, so um, just like we've been doing the last couple of days, figure out, read your problem, figure out what the question is asking, what problem type it is. Today, remember, we're focusing on put together, take apart, but soon you'll need to decide. So notice today that these things, uh, the 13 people are in a bike race, Eight people are at the top of the hill, the rest are at the bottom of the hill. So um, we're just separating the people and putting them, you know, put together, take apart. It's not that any of them are leaving or um, any of that kind of thing. No, no more are coming. The total's 13. Eight are one place. Some are in another place. So that's a put together, take apart problem. As you get to the back, then at the bottom it's going to ask you these kinds of questions. In problem five, the unknown is the total or part. So when you read this, what's the unknown part? What, um, the unknown number, I'm sorry. Um, Carissa buys four new books. Now she has 13 books. How many books did Carissa have before? Carissa has four, buys four new books. She now has 13. Hmm. So you need to draw your math mountain, figure out where the numbers go, make your equation, and figure out um, what part is missing. What's the unknown number? Is it the total? Or is it one of the partners that is missing? So that's the check understanding at the bottom of the page. So let's think about this one. Carissa buys four new books. Now she has 13 books. Hmm. She has four. I should write that here. That's one of the parts. Or she buys four. And now she has 13. So that's my total. All right. So my unknown is one of the partners or add-ins, right? So I can circle part there. Continue on solving all of those. And then at the bottom, there's this where you need to circle total or part for number five, six, and seven. All right, video is about to end. So now begin page 43 if you haven't already.
Go ahead, mathematicians. You